This is X-100 to Goldenrod. X-100 to Goldenrod. Do you read me? Over. Normal descent on instruments. Normal descent on instruments. Altitude 90,000 feet. Approaching critical velocity. Something's wrong. I'm falling too fast. Goldenrod, I'm in trouble. The jets don't break my speed. I'm releasing the drag chute. The ship feels 500 pounds heavier. There's no drag and I'm getting too close to the earth. There's nothing more I can do now. Estimate impact radius. 10 miles northeast, your location. In case your cord is damaged, get this. Velocity 6,700 miles. Weight ratio 187. Thrust 220 tons. Tell the others. Goldenrod Baker to Goldenrod Abel. 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 Did you find it? Came down about three miles east of Walker's Pass. Area 116 or 117 on your map. How bad is he? He... he bought it all the way. You're certain? No respiration, no heartbeat, no pulse. Came down pretty hard. The rocket unit's still in one piece and most of the control section. Everything else is scattered around for about half a mile. Tell Donna to cover the entire area. Canaveral will want all the visual data we can give them. Oh, and uh, don't move anything till we get there. Go and Rod Baker out. Terribly sorry, Julie. I can understand how you feel. But we can't let it interfere with the work we have to do. You both knew it was a calculated risk. I'll be all right, Doctor. Well, let's get going. Of the Dr. Wyman wants you to get full coverage on the entire area. This was your first project under Dr. Wyman, wasn't it? 
Yeah. I helped design the jettison unit. It didn't work. On a project like this, there's always a margin for error. You expect it. Sure. Then when it comes, you're fine. You really didn't expect it after all. You think Julie expected it? With his engagement ring on her finger? John Cocorn was the first man to be sent up in a satellite and ejected back to Earth. Well, he was supposed to come back alive. Let's check the rest of them. Look, Dave. Look. Don't blame yourself. The answer lies in this wreckage. Let's recheck the crash pattern. rip was smaller when we first got here. With the stress of settling into the ground, it widened it? How could that be? The entire hull is made of magnetic alloy. I'd like to examine the body before we bring it out. All right. Watch you don't cut yourself, Doctor. Sign of body rigidity. No skin discoloration. Temperature feels normal. No dilation whatsoever. The cause of death must be due to an internal rupture. I've never seen an internally damaged body with no sign of rigor mortis after so long. Let's get him back to the lab so we can continue the examination. Dr. Wyman. He wants to take John back to the lab. Right. Dave, get a blanket. Everglade. Hello, Everglade. This is Goldenrod. This is Goldenrod. How do you receive, Or? Aren't they receiving it? That's not the question. Are we transmitting? They don't receive anything from us. They won't try and reach us until the frequency check at 9 o'clock. Mm. 
By all medical standards, this man is dead. No heartbeat, no respiration. Yet his tissues refuse to dissipate. Was well, it possible he could be in a, well, a kind of catatonic state? Could he still be alive? Perhaps a form of hypometabolism. That's impossible. It's hard to stop. There's no circulation. You know as well as I do that when this process stops, the brain starts to deteriorate almost at once. Within a matter of three minutes, it dies. Hello, Everglade. Hello, Everglade. This is Goldenrod. This is Goldenrod. How do you receive? Over. Maybe after this long a radio silence, we'll switch over to an emergency channel. I've already tried that. How about the Air Force? Hello, Air Force Emergency. This is Special CQD Goldenrod Station. How do you receive? Over. Everything's all filed up here. I couldn't receive the spot weather report on this thing. Yeah, but are you sure it's not yours, Pat? No, I've already checked everything. Will you go out and ask Steve to come in here a minute? Sure. Hello, Everglade. Hello, Everglade. This is Goldenrod. This is Goldenrod. Do you receive? Over. Nothing, Doctor. Doctor. Well, what is it? It's not a lesion. It's more like something had been forced through the tissue under high pressure. Steve. The radio still won't work. Dave wants to see you. Okay. I bet they're going nuts at the Cape. Get that radio working, Steve. We're going to need assistance. Hey, what's the trouble? I can't transmit across the room with this thing. That sounds like a magnetic disturbance. Yeah. Could be the power lines fouled up outside. Oh. What's happening in there? I don't know. Somehow we've got to get through to the Cape. Uh, five hours overdue now. I bet half the brass in the state of Florida is up in arms. Well, I hope not. If enough people find out about this, we'll have everybody up here. Yeah, I'll check the tower. You stay here and keep trying to get through, will you? Yeah. Look, if you pick up anything, give a yell, huh? Eh? Right. Blood pressure, 120 over 80. Normal for a living man. That's impossible, Doctor. You must have made a mistake. The doctor, I checked it twice. Well, this man does have normal pressure. That's impossible. Take a blood sample. I'll make a radiation count. to Everglade. Come in, Everglade. Over. Golden Rod to Everglade. Come in, Everglade. This is an emergency. Like a bear. 
came from out of the darkness and was heading for the lab. I know I put a couple of shots in it before I went down. Wounded animal that large isn't good. How well are we armed? Well, besides these pistols, we've got a couple of rifles. I think it headed toward the back of the building. Dave, are you sure you're all right? Yeah, yeah, it just clipped me. Inside. <laughs> It's in the medical room. Wait a minute. This didn't come off any bear. Bring the light over here, will you? No fur, no blood. Very much like leather. Is the power out completely? Yes, it is. You have any idea what caused it? Could be a break in the cable of the dam or a short circuit in one of the transformers. Dave, are you sure the building was thoroughly checked? Well, the wiring and fuse is all right. I went over everything thoroughly. I checked everything. I I'll check again. Nothing's wrong here. Like I said, it's probably the disturbance up at the dam. Well, Steve needs some help boarding the window. Right. Well, at least we won't freeze. A place like this would be equipped with heating. Up until a few months ago, this was a radar monitoring station. Most of the ultra-sensitive instruments respond better to the cooler atmosphere. Systolic was 140. I'll have a blood sample for you in a few minutes. How long do you think it'll take an hour to realize we're incommunicado and send aid? Well, the security operation is tight as this, maybe another 12 hours. That could mean we could be here another day. I've never seen anything quite like it. Notice the way it's fighting the others. Seven hours and his blood is still alive. So we'll have to drive to the nearest telephone and call a cape. Every minute counts. What is it? I've seen a mythic dominance of a cell structure before, but this is completely out of proportion. Well, what are they? What do they mean? Well, normal blood has two basic cells. The red carry oxygen and the white fight infection. But this blood has three. The third cell, that big one. Well, that's completely foreign to any blood structure. If that bacterioid is contagious, then we've all been exposed. I doubt if it's communicable. We better get to the nearest town fast. I imagine that'll be Desert City. But that's over 30 miles. Isn't there anything closer? There's nothing on the map. Steve, call the cape from Desert City. Get in touch with uh, Dr. Zimmerman. Don't go into detail. Just tell him to get here as quickly as he can. Well, what about equipment? Well, we need a new power supply. We need a refrigerated truck or an ambulance to transport the body. Oh, and uh, tell them to request priority clearance directly to Walter Reed Hospital in Washington. Right. I'll be back as soon as I can. Keep checking the blood pressure, Doctor. The last count was 140 over 80. Well, that's all we can do with the present.
Any luck with the Jeep? I can't figure it out. Carl's and both the truck and the Jeep are burnt out. They're both stopped. Take a look. We're in a magnetic force field. A what? A net of static electricity is surrounding the entire area. That's why our power is there. Well, we're not going anywhere tonight. The truck and the Jeep are burned out electrically. What would cause a thing like that? There's a very powerful magnetic source somewhere nearby. It's reversing all positive electrical power. Dr. Wyman, how close is the uh, satellite compartment? Two, maybe three miles. I was just thinking, is it possible that the compartment could be bombarded with electron particles? Uh, it could be. It's happened before in some of the earlier snark farms to the Cape. When the missiles came back to Earth, they were pretty heavily magnetized. But there's a mountain range between us and the compartment. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be any logic behind any of this. Well, here's something to complicate things even more. This was a shot I took when Dave and I first got out there. Look at it closely. Dave, remember I mentioned the strange mud? Yes. Well, this was the last shot taken. Most of the mud has disappeared and the opening is larger. Yes, I remember that when we took John out of the compartment. But at the time, it didn't seem important. Well, someone or something must have been there. There's an explanation and a good one for all of this. There must be. Some of the things that have occurred today are without precedent. Man in there alive, it should be dead. Something that's never happened before. And we've never sent a man so far into space before. Well, we're all tired, disappointed, but under a terrible strain. After this long, the Cape has probably contacted the Pentagon. It's just a matter of time. What if they can't get through? The magnetic force field works both ways. Well, in the morning, one of us will have to hike down and meet them. As a precautionary measure, I suggest we all stay in this room tonight. Steve and Dave and I will take turns watching Kukorn. Right. <laughs> Julie. I'm sorry, Doctor. I just can't hold it back any longer. I know. <laughs> I wish there was something I could say. I'll listen if you like. It's bad enough losing someone you love. But this, the unknown, being held here. Alex, I don't... Julie. <gasps> Julie, he alone stood on the threshold of our future. What happened to him today, we may learn more than we've ever known. Maybe I should just listen. It's so incongruous. He's dead. But is he dead? Scientists, the more we learn, the more we realize there is to learn. Life itself is the greatest miracle. Well, when we get him to the hospital tomorrow, maybe we'll know. Good night, Doctor. Good night, Julie.
what is it? It works fast. Let's take him down. I don't know. I think so. Where's Dr. Wyman? What happened? Suppose you tell us what happened. Julie, what happened to Dr. Wyman? He's dead. Why are you staring at me? You don't think that I had anything to do with it. John, we're just as confused as you are. Did you see anything? Was there anybody in the room with you and Dr. Wyman? I don't know. The last thing I remember, I was making my descent. The jets didn't take hold. When I finally released the drag chute, it didn't hold. It was too close to the ground. You crashed. We brought you here. You don't remember. I seem to be floating in a warm black mist. Oh, my head, my neck. No. Look at that. The same mark. What do you mean, dead? When we pulled you out of the compartment, your body had completely ceased to function. A hypometabolistic state, a type of suspended animation brought on by the contraction of the mesentery blood vessels in the pressure change of landing. That kind of terminology I'd expect it from Dr. Wyman, not from you. Well, it seemed like the natural diagnosis. From Dr. Wyman, yes. In some way, I think Dr. Wyman is influencing me. I think he may be a part of me now. I don't understand. You've got to help me. Help me. Fantastic. It's unbelievable. Things like this just don't happen. But it has happened. I'm not afraid. It didn't come here to destroy. Johnny, try to tell us. 
What didn't come here to destroy us? Is he all right? Yes. They're gone. What are you talking about? Come see for yourself. That's what your blood looks like now. Normal in every respect. Four hours ago, it was populated with alien amorphic cell structures. I think we should see what I look like under the fluoroscope. How will it work with the power out? It operates on a radium cathode tube. What are they? The amorphic cell structures have expanded to... They're using his body for a breeding ground. You're not going to harm them, are you? What do you mean? We don't even know what they are. The one thing we do know is that they're alien to the human body. Somehow they must have come down with you in the compartment. Only a few hours ago they were microscopic. We've got to do something. If you destroy them, you destroy me. You can't destroy them. But why not? That's why not. <laughs> track it down and make sure it's dead. No, let's wait for help. We can't possibly combat that thing by ourselves. Look, nobody's gotten to us, and no one probably will until it's destroyed. Why does it have to be killed? Why are we always so quick to destroy? It's, it's an alien. It's the first of its kind to come to the Earth. John, you know what it's done to you, breathing its young in your body. You saw what it did to Dr. Wyman. Isn't that reason enough? It has to be killed. I don't understand. It didn't come in malice. It could have killed all of you earlier, but it was me it was after. It had to come back to me to, to nourish its young. All the more reason to destroy it. Suppose it is still alive. Bullets don't harm it. The well, fire seems to. Not a very pistol. It has an engulfing flame plus a delayed explosion. It's better than a ladder. Very pistol? A flare gun. At short range, it'll chop down anything. There's some in the cabinet in the hall. I'll get them. Oh, Dave, you can't. Listen, you can't kill a living creature without giving it a chance to justify itself. Oh. Let's put him in there. Can you give him something to keep him quiet? Sodium amatol. Good. I'll leave you here to watch him. Donna will come with us. We're going to need photographic coverage. Will that really keep him out until we get back? I don't know. Under normal circumstances, this should render him unconscious for at least 12 hours. But this isn't a normal person. What you and he were to each other has no bearing on what he is now, Julie. I'm not worried. He's not dangerous. Not to me, anyway. Well, we can't take any chances. 
That creature eludes us and comes back here. Or if he gives you a bad time, you better know how to use a very pistol. Believe me, Julie, he's not the same man you were engaged to. Thanks. Let me have one for Julie, will you? Now, don't worry. If we run into any trouble, we're not going to be heroes. Just pull the hammer back. Just be back as soon as you can. healthier than I am. You know, I, I think it's leading us back to the compartment. Yeah, it looks that way. How long do you think we've been out? Hey, look, my watch is running again. Mine, too. That means the magnetic field must be broken. It must be dead. We better make certain. Seems like the most likely place for it to go. Yeah, I don't see anything. Maybe it's on the inside. Yeah. Only I mean, you stay here until we're sure it's safe. Dave, you circle to the left and I'll go to the right. Check. We hadn't chased it off. Might have wound up like Wyman. We better get back. Julie's all alone, and the monster may try and contact a coin again. Yeah, let's go. Don't be afraid, Julie. 
I'm not going to hurt you. That wasn't meant for you. That was for the creature or whatever it is. Don't stare at me, Julie. I'm sorry, John. If what you say is true and I've been dead, I don't know what this means for us, but I haven't changed in my feeling. Julie, we're all afraid of the unknown. You don't understand what's happened to me, and, and because there's an unknown being, you want to destroy it. But isn't it possible that what's taking place is for a purpose? Why not let the creature have a chance to tell us why it's here? But it broke in and attacked us. It killed Dr. Wyman. It's done this to you. We had to do something. Now the others have gone to make sure it's dead. It's not dead, and they won't be able to find it. How do you know? Julie, I'm the one who's had the most contact with it. Something foreign is inside of me. Alive. If there was any cause for fear, wouldn't I know it? But I'm not afraid. This creature is intelligent. It wants something. We've got to give it a chance to communicate with us. It didn't work. My bodily reactions aren't those of a normal person. What happened to the creature? Got away. Then it's alive. He told me it would be. Somehow he knew. He seems so sure that it's not evil. This isn't a battle between men and an unreasoning being. Can't you see it doesn't want to kill for the sake of killing? It could have done away with all of us earlier if it wanted to. Until we discovered its fear of fire. Listen. When you were out checking the power lines last night, all you had with you was a pistol, which you fired at it with no effect. If it had been a wild animal, it would have tried to kill you before moving on. Can you count for what happened to Dr. Wyman? No, I can't. But maybe it could if we gave it the chance. Why should we give it a chance? It's already committed murder. It's done, I, I don't know what, to you when it's attacked Donna. Look. If you were in a strange place and you were trying to communicate with the inhabitants, but every time you tried, they made a move against you, the only way to break through to them would be to take a hostage. Can't you see that's what it's been doing? It's been acting out of fear and self-preservation. It wants to communicate with us, but it, it doesn't know how. We've got to give it a chance. So what do you have in mind? It's obvious the creature keeps coming back to me because part of it is inside of me. Why not let me lead us to it? In the daylight, in the open. Maybe he's got something. When we were out searching for the creature, our watches started running again. And then when we encountered it, they stopped. On our way back here, they became active again. And now everything's dead. Now, it's my guess that the magnetic disturbance originated from two different locations. One from the creature. And then from you. It might be the only thing that's keeping you alive. If my life has been given back to me, it's for a purpose. Trust me, and we'll learn why. If the creature isn't what you believe it to be and we're forced to kill it, then we have no indication of what will happen to you. I know. That's why it's important to let the creature make itself known before we take any action. All right. But if we follow Johnny's plan, we still have to be prepared. We have no way of knowing what can happen to us out there. Remember. We've agreed to give the creature every opportunity to prove itself. In the morning, we still agree to follow Johnny's plan. We'll get an early start. By that time, maybe help will arrive. Dave and I will stand guard. The rest of you get as much sleep as you can. Will it come back here tonight? I don't know. Steve, I'm a 
little worried about Johnny's plan. So am I. I don't know if he's responsible for his actions. I think it might be a trap. If it is, this time we're going to be prepared. Come on. How about a Molotov cocktail? We fill it with gasoline and then use it as a hand grenade. That's the ticket. We could saturate the creature and detonate it with a very pistol. There's no way it could escape then. How many bombs are we going to make? Well, between us, we ought to be able to carry about six. What are we going to do with the girls? Take them with us. Better than leaving them here unprotected. That's enough. Are we going to tell Julie and Donna about this? No, I think we better make sure Johnny doesn't find out, huh? You ever seen any of these work before? Yeah. Guadalcanal. Grilla Tank was running wild behind our lines. He knew we couldn't do any much damage with our rifles, so he was playing kind of a cat and mouse game. Until he knew he could finish us off. Not far from where we were, there was a truck overturned. I kid and saw what was happening. Got the brilliant idea to bring me some gasoline, and we made up some of these. That tank came by, we smeared it, but good. Pretty horrible to see, but it worked. Yeah, well, it'd be good for me to get off of this mountain. Even with these cocktails, I'm not anxious to tangle with that creature again. Well, none of us are, but I don't think we have any choice. It came down on the satellite, it's our responsibility. Besides, it's better to stalk it and have it come after us. Yeah, you're probably right. And so I wish we could wait for some help. I just don't like the idea of taking Julie and Donna with us. Well, I don't either. Then we don't know when help will arrive. We can't leave them alone. What are you doing here? What are you doing with Dr. Wyman's body? I couldn't sleep. I had to see how he was killed. Half his head gone. It's horrible. I don't expect you to trust me. I don't even know whether I can trust myself, but please don't treat me like a monster. I haven't done anything wrong. John, it's not a question of right or wrong. Maybe you're not responsible for your actions. Whether you are or not, who knows what you might do? Look, John, don't you? Don't you realize this unknown creature is using your body as a breeding ground? We don't know what to expect. I can't deny anything you've said. I do receive impulses from the creature, but... I know I have free will. I... I know I can still make my own decisions. Was it your own free will or the creature's? But insist it's benevolent. I'm not sure. But I do know that we have to give it a chance to explain. And I know that no harm will come to you. The line will be here in about three hours. Better get some rest. It's all the same to you, I'll stay here for a while. I'll get the bags. You will give it a chance to explain. We'll give it a chance.
creature isn't far away. There's some hills to the north and a cave. But he's never been in this area before. How does he know there's a cave? in there. Julie, Donna, stay there. There's nothing to fear. We're not going to take any unnecessary chances. The girls will wait here. Okay, you lead the way. You're going to give it a chance. You're not going to kill it. You're not going to kill it. What happened? Why did you let him go? Well, we couldn't stop him. I brought them to you. They don't understand. I'm not sure I do. How can I help you to communicate with us? Now I am able to speak by assimilation, a form of photosynthesis. I have been able to incorporate certain of Dr. Wyman's functional processes. Was Dr. Wyman's death necessary? Through his sacrifice, I can communicate, understand your reasoning, your motivations, your way of life. I will need your help. Together we must make them understand that I have not harmed you, and that we will give them a better way of life. Far away. Let's move in. Do not be afraid. That's Dr. Wyman's voice. It is his voice. But how? Yes, I am using Dr. Wyman's voice. I have been able to master the use of many of his faculties. With his voice, I am able to communicate with you. You killed him! He is not dead. Not dead? He has gained something more than life as you know it. He is the first of your kind to attain immortality. Immortality? We're not interested in that kind of immortality. I know you want to destroy me, but listen. Please listen. I only want to help you. Millions of years ago, my people inhabited a planet such as yours. We discovered the ultimate power, just as you on Earth are about to do. You ready to make your move? 
We should have put this power to use for our own benefit. Instead, hatred, greed, and prejudice caused us to misuse that power. And it brought about our own destruction. Open target. Now's our chance. But you can't risk killing Johnny. No, wait. What harm is there in hearing them out? For centuries, we have been circling your Earth, waiting for a means to penetrate your atmosphere. Your projectile was the first to present a means of entry. Those before were not retractable and burned as they fell back to Earth. I am the first to come to you. With death and destruction? If what you say is true, what are we to expect? You need me, and I have come. Through me, we will unite our intellects within one body. It's insane. And how do you plan to do that? Already it has begun. Within the hour, the first of our new generation will be born. It's true. I can feel it inside. You're imposing your will on us. You're sacrificing our civilization for the resurrection of your own. I've been a fool. The only way you can be saved from your downfall is by our sacrifice. What you propose is dominance. Not salvation. Don't be governed, governed by fear. Go ahead and kill me. You've already said I'm dead. A dead man with a brain and a body kept alive artificially to, to feed a generation of monsters. That's, That's not, not true. true. If you don't kill me, a new civilization is inside of me. It will destroy mankind as we know it today. The future of our race is in you. You've got to kill me. We have to destroy it. John! Run! Get away from it! Oh. He will live on to become a greater being in future generations to come. Don't kill me! In destroying me, you are destroying your only hope for mankind. John made the decision. Let's hope it was the right one. We'll probably never know. Him. 